Hi, I'm Cheryl and welcome to the Sewing Room channel. I've got a beautiful and fun project for you to do and that's this gorgeous table runner. I just love the colors that I selected. Now the blue fabric is from Joanne Fabrics and Crafts and this pear print fabric Unfortunately, I don't remember where I bought it. It's been in my stash for years. I just ran across it and I thought I've got to put this into a table runner. Now all of the supplies and how much you need are listed below your YouTube screen. So let's get started on this table runner. These are the cutting instructions for fabric A. When you purchase your fabric, it is folded in half. So here's your fold line, and then your selvage edges are down here. Leave it folded. Use your cutting mat to help you cut out all of your fabric. It'll be much easier. So cut this edge straight. So you're gonna line your fold line, uh, excuse me, you will align your fold line on your cutting mat. So cut this edge straight, go over 10 and a half inches, and cut, go over another 10 and a half inches and cut. Then take the two strips that you've just cut, stack them on top of each other, cut your selvage edges off, go over 10 and a half inches and cut, and go over again 10 and a half inches and cut. Here are the cutting instructions for fabric B. Fabric B is for your border along the sides of the table runner and at each end, and it also includes your binding strips. Again, leave your fabric folded, selvage edges are here, cut this edge straight, go over five and a half inches and cut, and you're gonna cut five of these, five and a half inches wide. Then cut the remaining fabric in two and a half inch wide strips and you will cut eight of those. Stack four of your five and a half inch wide strips on top of each other. Cut your selvage edge off and go over five and a half inches three times and make your cuts. Then for your border, leave it folded Cut the selvage edges off and go over 16 and a half inches and cut. On all of your fabric B, five and a half inch square pieces, turn them over to the back side and you're going to draw a line from corner to corner. So place your ruler along there and then draw a line. Here is fabric A, 10 and a half inch square. Take two of your five and a half inch squares and place them in opposite corners. So you're lining them up on the edge here and then over here. Now my drawn line is going from the side over to this side. And same thing here, from the side over to here. Go ahead and pin these on. And pin all the way across because you will be stitching on the bias and the fabric has a tendency to stretch when it's on the bias. So now you're going to stitch on here, but you're not going to stitch on your drawn line. You're going to stitch right next to it on this side of the line on this square. And then on this one, you'll stitch on this side of the line. And again, do not stitch on top of the line, but really, really close. After stitching, you want to cut these corners off. So place your quarter inch line on your ruler on your stitch line and lay it there and then cut. Then go over to the other corner and do the same thing. As you're cutting all of your corners off, you're going to notice that you have a lot of these. So stick around till the end of the video and I'll show you a quick little project that you can make using these little squares. Now press your seams on the back side, then unfold and press on top. Take two more squares and place them in opposite corners and you will notice that they overlap your previous squares that you stitched on. It is supposed to be like that. If they're not overlapping, then something has been cut incorrectly. 
go ahead and stitch them on and again stitch on this side of the line over here and on this side of the line here but do not stitch on top of the line once you've got it all stitched on then you're going to cut your corners off just like you did before then go to the other side and cut these off then press your seams unfold and press on top when you're done your block should be ten and a half inches square and you need to make five of these now stitch them all together so bring two together bring front sides together and stitch a one quarter inch seam continue stitching them in one long row then press your seams on the back unfold and press on top and I try to press all of my seams going in one direction take four of your two and a half inch wide strips that you cut and stitch two together bring front sides together and stitch a quarter inch seam and you're making two sets and then press your seams open place each one of those strips on opposite side of the table runner take the seam and place it in the middle edge of the center block and make sure that you pin the strip down so place pins all along the edge on both sides and then stitch a one quarter inch seam all along the edge after you're done stitching then press your seam on the back side then unfold and press on top and I'm pressing my seam going away from the center of the table runner then after that take a ruler and cut the ends of the strips even with the end of this section right here and you're going to go to the opposite end and also do the same thing now take your piece of fabric that is 16 and a half inches wide this way by five and a half inches this way place one at each end of the table runner center it on there you'll find that it is longer than the width of your table runner it was purposely cut like that place it on the edge and stitch one quarter inch seam then press your seam on the back side unfold and press on top and I like to press my seam going away from the table runner and again do that at both ends now trim this straight along here this way you get an exact fit so that's why I always like to cut it a little bit longer so place your ruler on this edge here line it up always take your time and then cut it off go to the other side and do the same thing and do this at both ends here's how you would cut your fabric for the back again leave your fabric folded cut your selvage edges off cut this edge straight go over 16 and a half inches twice and do your cut then you'll cut your selvage edges off stitch your two sections together stitching a one half inch seam pressing the seam open take the fabric for the back of the table runner and place the back side up so if you're looking if you are using a print fabric for the back make sure that you're looking at the back side of that printed fabric I'm just using plain fabric then take your cotton batting and place it on top and your cotton batting is cut about the same size as your fabric is for the back then center your uh, table runner top piece over that and you will notice you will have extra fabric sticking around sticking out around all of the edges you will probably notice that the fabric you cut for the back is considerably longer than this piece so you're going to trim some of that off so I'm going to leave about an inch down here so I'm going to go ahead and cut this end off so it's easier to work with and just set this aside for another project 
Make sure all of your fabric layers are smooth and even all the way across. There's no lumps in there. Then in order to prepare your table runner to do quilting stitches, you need to place pins. So you want to scatter pins all over the top. This is real important. So just go all the way down, place some down the center and along your sides. Then I'm going to give you some suggested quilting stitch patterns. And it's important to do quilting stitches because you want to be able to hold all of the fabric layers together. It's going to look much nicer and it's going to hold up in the wash and dry cycle. So one of the easiest uh, quilt stitches I can give you is something called stitch in the ditch. And this is where you just stitch in all of your seams all over it. Wherever there's a seam, just stitch in it. If you would like something a little more decorative, here are some other suggested quilt stitch patterns. You could do stitch patterns or lines of stitching that are two to three inches apart. So you could go from one end of the runner to the other and do three or four rows of stitching and then going across those rows again two or three inches apart. You could even go at a diagonal, so a 45 degree angle all the way across, then you would go back and go the other direction. You can also use a serpentine stitch doing the same thing where you just go straight along this way and the, the uh, machine is making the wavy lines, but you're going down a straight line when you do it. So it's the same pattern as this, it's just that you're using the serpentine stitch. And all computerized sewing machines have that. And then here is going on the corner. Now if you're interested in doing and learning more about quilting stitch patterns, check below your YouTube screen for a video link that'll take you to how to do quilting stitches. One of the things that will help you have more successful quilting stitches is this walking presser foot. So look through your little bag of presser feet and see if you have one. Not all machines include it, but you can purchase one to go with your machine. This helps to prevent your fabric from stretching and shifting apart and your stitches will be a lot more even. After all your quilting stitches are done, then you want to trim this excess fabric that's on your back and cotton batting off and you want to cut it even with your table runner top. So just line your ruler up along that edge and then begin trimming all of it off. So go around to all of your edges and do that. After you finish trimming your edges, then you want to stitch your binding strips on. So for instructions on how to put the binding on, click below the YouTube screen for the video link. I'm going to show you another one that I made using the same pattern, but it's just a little bit larger. But the process and all the steps are exactly the same. This one here is 14 inches wide, and this one here is 20 inches wide. But the big difference between the two besides the size is the fact that in the squares, I put these little applique flowers. So you can see what a versatile pattern this is. You can even use panel fabric in these squares also. So if you're interested in learning how to make this little applique flower, check below your YouTube screen for the video link. I'm sure you've noticed that after you finished making this table runner, you had a lot of these little corners that you cut off. Don't throw them away. I'm going to show you really quick what you can make out of them. So you want to take two of them, a light and a dark, and stitch one quarter inch seam right along that diagonal edge. Then you're going to wind up with things that look like this. Go ahead and square the block up to four and a half inches. And after you've got it done, you have enough to make a pot holder. So you could create a little design that looks like this, that is a reflection of the table runner you just made. Okay, 
you can put the darks in the center like this and have just the opposite look. Or you can do what I did and I turned it into a pinwheel pattern. So what you want to do when you want to do this, no matter what pattern you want to make, you want to stitch this row together separately and this row together separately. So bring front sides together, stitch a quarter of an inch, and stitch a quarter of an inch. Then unfold them and you're going to press the center seam here and here going in opposite direction. So on this one you can make it go to your right and on this one go to your left. After you've done that, these two rows are stitched together. Then bring front sides together like this and stitch these two rows together and then press. And I'm going to refer you to a video link below the YouTube screen that'll take you to my pot holder playlist and you can pick how you want to finish it off, whether you want it with binding or without binding or with a hanging loop or without the hanging loop. I hope you enjoyed this video and I also hope you learned something new. If you're interested in more Table Runner tutorials, check below your YouTube screen for the video links. And don't forget to follow me on Instagram and check out my Facebook page. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time and happy sewing. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please click on the thumbs up button. Don't forget to click on share to share this video with your friends. If you haven't subscribed yet, click on that red subscribe button down there in the lower right hand corner of your screen. Don't forget to click on the bell. I'm Cheryl and this is a lot of manis. See you next time and happy sewing.